thank you for joining me on this project. Having looked through the film and editing it yesterday, I discovered that I've actually lost the first half of the film due to noise. My AC went out and I've got fans going. The noise of the fan picked up on everything and it sounds like I'm on the top of Butzer Hill in a raging storm. I will pick the little bits out to show you, but I won't show you the whole film. I will cut in with information from here that I'm going to show you and hopefully piece together a, a useful film. Let me restart my film. Hi, this is Sally Wood for Be Inspired and today I'm going to be showing you how to upholster some headboards. My friend brought them around a while ago in which to do it. And then the other day another friend popped over and said, why have you got my bedspread? Because I gave that too. And I said, well, she gave it to me to do this. So you told the bedspread, there's nothing wrong with upcycling something you already have or your, your grandmother might have. Enjoy messing with fabric. Try not to get so much in the landfill. The other thing about these are the headboards weren't big enough for the beds. So she put legs on them to raise them up to be more modern. Let's get on with it. Now I'm doing these on the floor because it's the safest place. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is cut into this. Under here is cotton wadding, which I'm going to leave in place. Pull these up because those no longer need to be there. And here is some rickrack style trim. Underneath here is another layer that has been tacked in. So this is actually quite an old piece. Let's see if I can get this up. Sometimes it takes a little while to ease everything into a position where you can easily get to it. And the paint on the fabric really doesn't help. As this comes up, I can see that there's staples under here, so I will need to pull those up. But it's also so well glued that it's going to pull the fabric up as it goes. I am going to just work my way around. These are actually tacks, buttons that become tacks. There should be usually at least one to two staples holding that in place. It gives it a little bit more of a puffy look. If you push in here, it doesn't ripple as much as if you push in there. So those ripple. That's why you put that on in. This fabric is a drawing here. I'm going to take the center panel out all the way up. Roll all of that up. Now, as I look at this, it actually is quite wonky. Usually, I tell you to put a center mark in. I'm not going to tell you to do that. Find a point and stick it in. Now, I'm going to fold the fabric back when it comes to this point. So I'm going to find that point here. Now I'm going to put the fabric back over, find the last point, which is here. Pull that quite firmly into this far corner. Pull the fabric back over and then cocking back tacking. I'm going to start here, pull it to here. I'm not pulling the fabric like this. I'm just going to let it do its own thing. Hard into the base here and staple all the way along. Because the fabric is taut from one point to another, it shouldn't really walk very far, and nobody's really going to notice if it does. Once you have that in place, I'm not even going to worry about this being misshapen and going up. It won't matter. Roll the fabric up and over. There's a couple of things I've noticed. Well, one I was aware of anyway. I'm recycling it yet again. I'm just going to put a little watch of that in each one of these. Just a little piece like that. So you can upcycle from various places. When you put the fabric in, you need to look for your pattern match. And there's a pattern match here, 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 and here. This and here are the same. I'm going to bring that in quite tight and up. This looks like it comes in slightly. So here would be the most even place for me to pull it into place. Pull that more or less even in as well. Now what I'm doing is I'm butting the front side of my staple gun to the inside of this wood so it stays nice and even. Down here I need to take some of this out because that goes right under. Push any stuff in back and secure. Once you're happy with everything just start infilling. Once you've got it infilled you can start cutting back like this. The nice thing is that I can't see any lumps where I put extra stuffing. Once you have both sides pulled in and cut back, pull the center. Not too much because you really want it to look like it's in line. And this pattern and this pattern are in line. 
and the corresponding one here. I'm going to make it a little bit taut, but not too taut, and then staple up. And as I move across, I'm going to pull the fabric up, but not too far. I don't want it to look as if it's been pulled in funky. When you've got your shape that you like, infill. As I come to this side, I'm going to do the same thing. Pull this pattern so it looks like it's there. Any pattern here, I'm going to do the same thing. Just pull it slightly. Now that I've got it in place, I'm just going to carry on cutting around here. I've got enough fabric on the top piece for the second headboard, which I'm going to do exactly the same way as I've just done this one. I'm going to make up the piping. It's double piping. I've put it on the bias because it's got to go up and round curves. I'm just going to cut along this folded line all the way across. Usually I cut double piping at two inches, but this is really thick fabric, so I'm actually going to cut it to two and a half inches all the way up. I've determined that I probably need two lengths per bed. So I will be cutting five lengths. This is the top of the fabric, so the pile goes down. Just cut that from the top, and I'm going to put a little V at the top so I know I have to sew down. Where I've put the little V goes at the top. There's my V, I'll pop that at the top there. At right angles, the stitch length is on a 2.6. Now I'm going to sew from that corner to this corner. Fold the fabric over for the new base and then put the new top on. This is quite puffy fabric so it's really not wanting to go through here. Double piping usually has a way of keeping it together, loosely together. It usually kind of comes about that far apart. I don't have double piping so I'm going to have to make this work. There's various ways pe people do it. Sometimes they wrap it like this and over. Other times they put it side by side. I'm going to just have to work out how I'm going to do this because the fabric is quite bumpy and uneven. I'm going to do it singly. So I'm going to fold the first side under and I'm going to pull that back as close as I can to the piping cord. So it's got about a quarter of an inch, less than that. It just runs along the outside edge here. I'm going to sew it on a number five all the way to the end. I don't usually do double piping like this. I'm worried that the two piping cords will swap sides, which is never a good thing, and that it won't run evenly. At least this way I have a chance of getting nice even piping. I've split this part from the second part and I am going to cut this right back to within quarter of an inch because I can't have it too thick when it folds over. Once I get that, I'm going to open the seam up, keep that open and carry on sewing across and on down to the end of the piping. This is going to be a, a long job. Now I'm going to change it to the double piping foot so it's got two grooves in it. Now I have to put the second row of piping in like this. The fabric's quite thick so I don't want to put it, I don't think I want to put it that way because I think it might get caught up. It might work got a cat helping me. If I decide to do it that way I'm going to just have to make sure that it's butted up quite closely. The other way to do it is to lay it on top like that and then roll it which might be the better way to do it. Lift the foot up, pop the piping foot down and then pull it into place. It's a bit of a slow process either way but I'm going to try to keep it as even as I possibly can as I go. The reason I haven't put this top down is I don't want the teeth pulling any of the fibres out, which might happen as it's being dragged through. Also, you can see how evenly it's going in. And with a bit of luck, all the stitches will be on top of each other and it won't look so bulky. And work all the way to the bottom yet again. It really wants to twist the other way, so just take your time. I'm going to cut the back off like that. I go quite a ways up, not too far because I like to keep it within a manageable length so I'll just go up to the first join. Then I'm just going to cut straight across. Now sometimes I would cut it so that I can fold it underneath. Because this is going onto a straight edge I can cut it straight across like that and butt it here 
Actually, I'm going to start on the other side because of the way that goes. I'm looking here, there's bits that are sticking out that I don't want. So I'll cut those back as I get to them and tidy it up. I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the end like that so that it holds. Then I'm going to go along here. I'm going to have to do it in little bits by the looks of it. The reason why I want this to go there is because that should give me a better edge. I'm just going to glue that all the way into position. Because the fabric is so thick, I'm going to do it in short lengths and push it really well into place. It should hide anything on the outside, so usually I push it in from the side and in, then into place. Anything that's over the edge of the wood, make sure that it's in line. Push it in from the edge of the wood and into place, little bits at a time. Sometimes you might need to put pins in to hold it, but I think I'll be fine with this. Depends what you're working on. Now I've got so far up, I'm going to cut some more of this back. Now I'm going to come around the corner at the top here, so I'm going to put plenty of glue in there. And then I'm going to follow that on up around into place. Should do it quite nicely. I will make my way all the way around. When you're putting back tacking in, make sure that you pull it taut either side of the center. Then you shouldn't have too much of a problem of the fabric moving up and down. Usually I tell you to put a center mark in. If you had a pattern that you needed to center, then yes, do that. Otherwise, in this case, the bed cover was wide enough that I could cut it and it went either side. So I didn't have to worry about where the center was going to be. This fabric was quite crunched up and quite ripply. So when I pulled the sides in, I just made sure that all the pattern matches were where they should be on the side and pulled them up. And the same on the other side. So effectively they were pulled sort of up and out both ways, like you do in most upholstery projects. The other thing is this is a velvet and I made sure that the pile is going down. Always make sure that if you have a fabric with a pile on, that it's going where it needs to go. When I pulled the top in, I made sure that the patterns were going in a straight or in as straight a line as I could and then just pulled in from the center on out until it went in quite smoothly. If you didn't want to do a headboard quite like this, place the fabric over here and pull it in. You could give yourself a, a nice headboard with a different kind of look. My advice would be to put some Dacron all the way to the edge of here, just to smooth it over. So that's another alternative. The original headboard actually had buttons in it which I took out. The buttons were like a tack. You can recover them and use them. What I do is I put tiny stitches around the back, cinch it in and pull it and glue it and they'll, they'll work again if you want to reuse that kind of thing. Otherwise, I just put little tufts of filler in and you cannot see where those holes or where those divots were in here. I'm really pleased with the way it's turned out and I only have one left because my friend picked hers up here, the other one up yesterday. Thank you for joining me on this project. I hope that I was able to impart some useful information to you eventually. I'm really pleased my friend picked up only one yesterday, otherwise I wouldn't have noticed how awful the film was. If you want to hear more from me, please subscribe, hit the bell button and a few thumbs up would be absolutely brilliant and then I know how I'm doing. And in the meantime, Take care. See you later. Ciao.